What is going on, guys? Welcome to another episode of the Thrive Forever Fit Show. I am your host, Jay Nixon, and I've got a little story for you today. Today's podcast is going to be a little story time. Now, before we start, you guys know the mission and the project that this podcast is designed around, and that is disruption, inspiration, and transformation. We want to disrupt the way you currently think. We want to inspire you to think differently. We want to give you the tools and the resources to transform your life into the life that you deserve and desire to live. Now, today's story, guys, goes back almost 30 years. Now, it's a little bit of a football story, but I don't want to get it twisted. I don't want you guys to think this is a glory days, uh, me reliving the memories story, because it is absolutely not. It is actually a story that haunts me to this day. And the lesson at the end is ultra powerful. Now, what I ask guys that if you love the show, if you love this episode, if you love the Thrive Forever Fit Show, if you love me, go to iTunes, go to YouTube, wherever you're listening right now, punch that five-star review, hit me with some hot words, let people know that you love the show, why you love the show, and then share it with a friend. That's how we, that's how we get this show to grow, right? I don't run ads. I don't have sponsors. I don't do any of that jazz. I am 100% organic. And that's how the show gets out there to more people. So the more you help, the more people we help. So I love you for doing that and I appreciate you. So the title of today's podcast is One Yard Short. Now, when I tell you that this story haunts me to this day, I'm being 100% serious. I think about this particular moment in my life multiple times, at least once a week. Think about that. This was 29 years ago, 1991. And I remember it like it was yesterday. I remember the exact spot on the football field we were at. I remember we were going into the east end zone of the football stadium. I remember it was the last play of the game. I can feel how, and this sounds, I'm going to be very graphic with this because this is how, this is how impactful this moment was in my life and still is. I can visualize, if you guys follow me at all, you know I talk about visualization, meditation, manifestation, all of those things. I can actually visualize, I can feel the moment 29 years ago of being in this spot on that field. I can feel the, the wetness of my jersey and my undershirt. I can actually smell the smell. If you've ever played sports in your life, you know that, that certain sporting equipment has a unique odor, if you will. So a football helmet and football pads, after you've worn them over and over and over repetitively, have this unique smell. So if you've ever played football, you, you know it. If you've ever been around a football player, you can probably smell it. And to the average person, it's probably something that doesn't smell very good. To someone who knows what that smell means, it actually, it's actually an odor of achievement. It's actually an odor of, of respect and, and conditioning to know what you've done to create that. So I can actually smell what my helmet smelled like 29 years ago. I know that sounds creepy and weird, but it just, it's so vivid in my mind. So here's the bottom line. It's 1991. It's Cisco, Texas. That's where I went to high school. 20, we have 20 points on the board. Our, the team we're playing is the Merkel Badgers. I don't know why it's some team with name or something. It's the Badgers, Merkel Badgers, whatever. They've got 21. <clears throat> I just score the touchdown to get us to 20. So it's 20 to 21. And we've got the option. If you know about football, you can kick the field goal and we tie. The game is over. It's 21 to 21. Everybody goes in their merry way. My coach decides we don't want to tie. We're going to go for the win. Fantastic, right? Super exciting. I remember Coach Evan. I remember the excitement. I can hear the band playing the fight song, guys. I'm jacked up. I just score my third touchdown of the game to give us 20 points. And I know if we're going for two, I know I'm going to get the ball. I know they're going to call my number. I know I'm going to be the one that gets to win the game for my high school big moment as a kid like you look forward to those moments so we're all on the sidelines I can still feel it I can still see it I can still just visualize the entire process coach coach Evett says all right guys we're going to win this thing we're going for two here's the play we're going to run 36 belly g keep and I was like wait what what see, see 36 belly g was like my go-to play 
Like that's, that was the play where you could guarantee I'm going to bust out five, six, 10 yards. It, it was our go-to play um, that I ran over and over and over and over again. So when I heard 36 belly G, I'm like, this is over. We're about to win the game. And he says, keep. Now what that means for people who don't watch football is we're going to fake 36 belly G. We're going to fake the handoff to me and the quarterback's going to keep the ball and he's going to try to run around the end and score. See, I guess in coach's mind, he thought, well, they know we're going to give it to Jay. Like he's the player. He, he's our guy. They know we're going to give it to him. And so we're going to fake him out. I remember thinking, no, no, that's not that. No, don't do, just give me the ball. I had such a conviction in my soul, even as a high school kid. I knew if they gave me the ball, the game was over. We were going to win. The game would be over. So as we trot back out onto the field, get ready to run the play, I just keep thinking to myself, if Jeff would just give me the ball, like what if I could just say, give me the ball, like let's just run, let's just run 36 belly G. Let's just do it. But back then, 1991, guys, you didn't go against your coach. It's not like it is in sports today. You didn't do your own thing. Your coach, especially in, in Texas high school football, your coach was like a, like a god to you. My coach, Coach Everett, was like a father figure to me. No way would I ever go against his, his idea or his thought, even though I knew in my soul. I knew in my soul it was the wrong thing to do. So we go up to the line, down set, hut, the ball gets hiked. I run to the 36 hole. Jeff fakes the ball. I plunge into the end zone pretty much untouched. Jeff tries to run around the end tackled before he gets in the end zone we lose 20 to 21 now that may seem very small and minuscule in the grand scheme of life and it really is but for me it's a metaphorical moment that i will never forget it was 29 years ago and it haunts me to this day and here's another reason it haunts me. See, in the small town like Cisco, after the game was over, one of the local church groups would throw like a punch and snack party for all the players and the cheerleaders and the band and all the high school students. And at every party, um, I would always run into, he was actually, he lived across the street from me. His name was Mr. Lineman, and he kept the stats for the game. So he was the guy on the sidelines who had a clipboard and he would write down the plays and how many yards you had and how many touchdowns and how many this and how many that. He kept all the statistics. And I remember that night very vividly. I remember him coming up to me and he said, hey, Jay, you had 199 yards rushing tonight and you scored three touchdowns. What a great game. And I remember thinking, that's not a great game. Like We lost. Like we just lost by one point. And we should have won. We could have won. See, so the story isn't about me. By the title's podcast, you might have thought, well, what? You know, he's caught up on this one yard. Like he wanted to get 200 yards rushing. So if you know anything about football at all, like, to rush for 100 yards in a game is a big deal. To rush for 200 yards in a game is, a, I mean, is a, it's very rare. It doesn't happen very often. Um, but that wasn't even the important thing to me. The important thing was that we lost the game. It wasn't that I missed 200 yards by one yard. But what was so impactful was the thing he said next. What haunts me to this day is the thing he said next. And when I say haunt, I mean motivate. What motivates me by that moment 29 years ago to this day was the thing he said as he walked away. And he kind of uttered, he kind of mumbled it under his breath because he knew, just like I knew, just like I felt, that they should have just given me the ball. Right? And hindsight's 2020. It's easy to easy to second guess that now. But I knew in my heart, guys, I'm telling you, like I convicted, knew in my heart. They hadn't stopped me all game. They were not, they were not going to stop me from, from, from scoring. It just wasn't going to happen. And he uttered this as he walked away. He just shook his head and he said, you should always win or lose with your best play. And that hit me like a ton of bricks. And I'm like, that's exactly how it was. You know, as a high school kid, I, I, was, I, didn't, I couldn't articulate that, but he said it perfectly. He said, you should always win or lose with your best play. And 36 belly G keep was not our best play. 36 belly G would have been the call. He was spot on. He was dead right. Your best play, guys. Always win or lose with your best play. See, I could have lived with that. Here's what I could have lived with. Here's what wouldn't haunt me. I probably wouldn't even remember this if we would have ran 36 belly G and I would have gotten tackled short of the goal line. I probably wouldn't even remember it. And I probably wouldn't remember it if we had ran 36 belly G and had scored the, had scored the conversion and we'd won the game. 
I mean, I had several games where I had over 200 yards and multiple touchdowns and game winning this and game winning that. I don't remember any of them, but I remember this moment because it was so impactful and it's still so impactful every day. And I'm going to tell you down in my, I have a power five takeaway from this episode. And one of the things in there is, is what, how I use this moment. And you've all had this moment in some way, shape, or form in your life. You've all had it. And see, what I'd give anything, I'd give anything to go back and run that play again. I'd give anything to be able to get in a time machine and recreate that same scenario. Because there's no doubt in my mind that we would have won the game. So the story and the lesson isn't about me. It's damn sure not a flashback to the glory days of high school. Those days are long gone. I'm an old cat now. But the lesson is this. The lesson is simply this. And what you need to remember about that is win or lose, always, always, always go with your best play. There's no shame in failure. There's no shame in falling short of where you want to be. As long as you leave it all on the field and as long as you run your best play. That night, we didn't run our best play. That night in 1991, we did not run our best play. And that's why it haunts me to this day. So here's your, here's your power five takeaway from this episode, guys. Number one, I've said it a thousand times, write these down. Always, always, always run your best play. Don't try to get fancy. Don't try to fake out the universe. Don't try to fake out anything. Do what got you there, right? Go with, you've heard that before, like when teams get fancy and they go with something fancy that didn't get them there, they usually fall short. The teams that are the most successful, the players that are the most successful, the business people that are the most successful, the humans that are the most successful, they go with what got them there. They are authentically themselves and they know their identity. Take this down to a metaphorical level of who you are. Be who you are. Go with what got you to where it is that you are and use your best play. When the conversion time comes, call on yourself. Call your best play. Number two is all, just that. Always bet on yourself. Don't leave it up to somebody else. To this day, I know if Coach Evett would have called my number, the, the outcome would have been different. We would have won. 22-21, we would have won. It would have been in the record books, and I wouldn't remember this story for a second. Always bet on yourself. And always, guys, always. I can't, I can't even articulate it because I can just still feel the play. It still, it still hits me right in the gut. As a leader, always give the ball to your best player. Don't try to get fancy, right? Number three, use your voice. Now, see, I said earlier in 1991, high school kid, you didn't question your coach. You didn't, you didn't say, hey, coach, I don't, man, I don't know. To this day, all right, hindsight's 2020. I'm 45 years old, 29 years ago. Easy for me to say. But here's, a very, here's, a, here's something that I think about. If I had it all to do over again, I would have looked Coach Evett directly in the eyes and I would say, coach, trust me, give me the ball. And I would have said those very words to him. And then he would have had to make a decision, right? But I would have used my voice. I would have, I would have stood up and said, give me the ball. If you give me the ball, we'll win the game. And I didn't do that, right? I didn't use my voice. Because as a high school kid, most of the time you don't have a voice. But now as adults, most of you listening are adults, you have a voice, use it. If you feel something convictedly in your soul, use your voice. You can't go wrong with that. You may not get what you want, but at least use your voice so you don't have to have that regret and that doubt of what if I would have said something. Number four is this. When the game is on the line, want the ball. Actually demand the ball. Meaning when the game of life is on the line, when it's your time to succeed, step up to that moment. Want the ball. Want your number called. Don't want somebody else's number called. See, one of the biggest knocks on some of the best players is they don't want to take the tough shot. They don't want to take the game-winning shot because if they miss, then it all rides on them, right? And they're not willing to fail in that moment. Be willing to fail in that moment. Because remember what I said earlier, win or lose, fail or fortune, always call your best play. And your best play means giving the ball to your best player. And you're your best player. Be your best player. Demand the ball in life. Number five, 
And this is the powerful one. This is the whole, this is the whole reason for this podcast. And the whole reason it, I use the word haunt, the whole reason this motivates me to this day, almost 30 years ago, use your past as fuel. Use your past failures, use your past shortcomings, use your past what ifs as fuel for the future. Not a day goes by that I don't think about that one play, that one yard. And I use that moment to make sure that I never miss another success opportunity. I think about that all the time and I, I use it as fuel to make sure that I never come up one yard short again. See, we're all, you all, are all one yard away from some kind of success in life. You're one yard away from something that you want. Maybe it's the body you desire. Maybe it's the relationship you desire. Maybe it's the job or the finances you desire. Maybe it's the faith you're looking for. You're all one yard away. Do those five things. Call your best play. Want the ball. Demand the ball. Right? If you use these five lessons, guys, you'll never end up one yard short like I did. You'll always score the winning conversion. You'll always come up. And even if you don't, even if you, even if you fall short, and you will from time to time, we all do, you'll know that was my best play. I gave the ball to the best person, which is me. I came up short. You can learn from that, right? There's no regret in that. There's regret in not calling your best play. To this day, if Coach Evett was still alive, I bet I could ask him, you should have given me the ball, Coach. And I feel like I know him well enough for him to say, you know what, you're right. If I had it all to do over again, if he had it all to do over again, there's no doubt in my mind, he'd give me the ball. Nothing against Jeff. Just wasn't our best play. Wasn't the play to call. And sometimes when you, when you get fancy and you don't call your best play, you get beat. Right? And that's, that's, the, hard, that's the hard pill to swallow. The pill would have been easier to swallow if we would have called our best play and still came up short. So in life, make sure you're not doing that. Make sure you're not sacrificing your success because you're, you're afraid to call your own number. Call your number, guys. I believe in you. I'm excited to watch you win. I hope this podcast resonated with you. It's something that just pops into my mind all the time. And I'm like, there's a lesson in this. You know, There's a moral to this story that other people can use to not have to feel that one yard short like I do. But it's a blessing, right? I use it as motivation. I use it as fuel. I use it as a fire to make sure that I don't come up one yard short anymore. I think about that play in a lot of like scenarios and situations where I've got the opportunity to get fancy, got the opportunity to do something unique. Always do what got you there. Be yourself, call your own number, Win or lose, call your best play. All right, guys, I love you. Again, you know what to do. If you, hey, listen, if you are not a member, if you're not part of my Wellness Lab Launchpad, my free Facebook group, get over there. What are you doing? Why are you waiting? Get over there, Wellness Lab Launchpad on Facebook. It's a free group. It's a fun group. It's an amazing group. It's unbelievable. There's like 600 people in there right now. It should be 1,000. Can we, just, can we just jump to 1,000? If you're in the group and you're listening, invite your friends. Why are you holding out on your friends? Why are you keeping your friends from all the awesomeness, right? Get them over there. Facebook reviews, Google reviews, YouTube reviews, iTunes reviews, all those things help, guys. All those things help get the show where it needs to be. Get it in, get it in the ears and the eyes of people that need the show, all right? I love you guys. I appreciate you listening. You guys are amazing. I mean, this, I get fired up. I, I wish I could just, I wish you were all right here with me so I could talk to you face to face. Like that's kind of what I envision when I do these podcasts is I feel like I'm in an auditorium or an arena and we're all face to face and we can have chats afterwards and it's a fun time. That's what I wish, but this is gonna have to do for now. So guys, I appreciate you listening. Love you. Have a great day and I'll talk to you soon. All right. Bye.